What we do here is go back, 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 back. it all the way through the end. Hey, everybody. Um, Before we even start, Vitral Reflex, thank you for the follow, man. Welcome to Team Avatar. Uh, now I can turn that on so we don't look awkward. <laughs> um... Yeah, thanks for the follow. Welcome to Team Avatar. Uh, we have the notifications turned off right now. The, the the sound played for whatever reason, even though I have it turned off. Um, so that's going to be weird in the video in on YouTube, but whatever. Just to let everyone know, someone followed while the song was playing. But we're here, another episode of the Oldie Gaming Podcast. I am Oldie Gaming, as per usual. The co-hosts with us are Sharky and the Funky Bunch and Cano Crisco. How's it going, guys? This week, Hello. we're going to touch on... First, of, b before I say this, three weeks in a row, keeping it strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of things we're going to touch on. IO Interactive, more Crash Bandicoot. It's coming. It's almost here. Black Ops 3, Brady and Madden. And other good stuff. So yeah. Um, update on the giveaway posters. I have not sent them yet. I was planning on sending them this weekend, but I ended up going to... Well, uh, first on Saturday, I participated in a charity stream for Darkness. And then I ended up three out, driving three hours to see my sister for her birthday. And then obviously today, the... Um, the post office isn't open today, so I couldn't really send it today anyways. But I will try and get the... I, it probably won't be this week. It, I'm hoping Saturday because... Well, I don't... I mean, I don't... I get off after the post office is already closed. And I don't know... Like, I'm, I'm sending them in a big envelope with um, bubble wrap on it. So, like, I don't know how the hell to sell that in. S send that. So yeah, just an update on that. They'll hopefully they'll be out next Saturday, but I'll of course send a tweet when I'm sending them to those of you who follow on the Twitter sphere. All right, so let's start up. Um, it was announced 
by Square Enix that they're putting up the developer IO Interactive for sale. And if you know who IO Interactive is, they are the creators, the developers of, I'm pretty sure, almost every single Hitman game. Especially this one that's just recently come out. And that puts, if, if you've played the Hitman games at all, they're coming out in episodes. So you, you get an episode one month, and then the next month you get another episode. And they're basically like new missions every time an episode comes out. And that's actually putting the season two episodes, like they might not be made because... IO Interact because Square Enix is selling IO Interact Interactive and if no one picks them up they will probably won't be able to make a season 2 which sucks I played the first Hitman or I played this most recent Hitman and it's pretty fun I didn't beat more than the first two episodes because we all know I'm terrible at finishing any sort of story mode game but yeah I mean it's still a really good game and that wouldn't be that would be like a huge loss to a lot of hitman enthusiasts and I know there are many yeah I feel like I don't know if maybe for a lot of people though this past round of more like the episodic model for that game I can't tell if that like I mean from a money standpoint it had to have helped them in the sense that they got to really generate revenue a lot longer than initially anticipated because a lot of it was just like deals like if you didn't buy a season pass you were just buying dlcs like all the time um but i'm i feel like for the, for square enix like i don't think it did well enough for their standards would be my guess that for them they probably just don't want to have like they don't want to waste their resources and effort on it if it's not going to really pay off like huge for them because they've got so much other stuff in the works generally, but I don't know. Someone will pick it up, I'm sure. Yeah, that, I doubt that. That I doubt that anyone's gonna let that go. Shout out to San Antonio Spurs ninety seven in the chat. What's up, dog? Um, way to blow a lead yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> or today? No, that was today. No, that was, the, yeah, that was today. Yeah, that, that was earlier really. today. <clears throat> yeah, was, I really uh, hope you guys beat the <laughs> beat the um whatever they're called. The Warriors. I saw a, Warriors. I saw a meme and it was like, it said something about like the list of people in the past year that have blown a 25 point lead in the playoffs. And it was a picture of the Atlanta Falcons, the Pacers from the first round against the Cavs, and then the Spurs got it into that list today. Yeah. So that yeah. was funny. He said we need Kawhi. And that's, I am, I completely agree. You guys fell apart when he went, when he got injured. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, because they were up by, like, 20. 25 at one yeah, point. Yeah, 25 During the point. first half. He, he puts the straps on. Mm. What's up, Joey? Go Who are, Pats. are they playing? Are they playing? Are they in the Western Conference Finals already? Yeah, yeah. they're already playing. Yeah it's, yeah, it's the Warriors and Spurs. So if they sweep, gonna, they're going to have so the, much rest. And then the Cavs play whoever between the Celtics and the Warriors who – which they played tomorrow, right? This so, I mean, well, I mean, the Cavs got another Brown, Brown. at least it's actually five days before they play again. Yeah, they said the earliest would be like Wednesday. Yeah. Well, yeah, because they, I'm trying to think, Celtics and Wizards play tomorrow. Yeah, they play tomorrow, and then and that'll be game that's seven. That's game so. seven. And then it's probably two rest days for whoever wins. I don't uh, have any anyway. beer right now. They want us to shotgun a beer. <laughs> I don't have any beer in my um, house, unfortunately. Actually, I do. It's in glass bottle, and you can't really shotgun those. <laughs> um, I do, I do have a beer in my fridge. I just don't feel like shotgunning one. All right, uh, let's get back. We're, we need to get back to talking to gaming. We got off a little bit. The, the, the sports team. Yeah, we went off. We do like sports too. We are we are not only gamers. Um, so sure. first we talked about Future of Hitman. Now we're going to move on to the game all of us, the, the three of us are really excited about, but none of us are going to be able to play because none of us have PS4, and that's the Crash Bandicoot Remastered. They showed off a trailer for the Polar Bear, and it is as cute as ever. <laughs> and it's just making, it's, it's adding to the hype of the game. Like, I'm super tempted to 
please, please, that's enough of that. Um, I'm super tempted to buy a PlayStation, even though I know I cannot. Yeah. Like, these are, well, because I think for, uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but I know, like, for me, before I got an Xbox 360, I had a PlayStation. So I feel like that's why, like, these remastered games, like, if they ever, beyond just, like, the Crash Bandicoot series and stuff, if they ever remastered, like, the Jack series or, like, the Sly Cooper series, like, Ooh, Sly I'm, Cooper was the shit back in the day. I know, well, I know they remastered it on PS3, but if they wanted to remaster it on PS4, like, I am then tempted to actually pick up an X, or a PS4, because those are games that I will forever want to play. But, the, I don't know, Polar Bear looks cool. I remember riding around on that thing as a, as a youngin. Yeah, this game looks super fun. Yeah, it looks awesome. I know, and then... My kids would love it too, so I mean, it's really tempting just go out get a PS4 yeah, just to play this game. But what's very promising is if at the bottom of that article that you sent, um, it says it's due out June 30th for PS4, but the last line it makes you hope it says, but it may not remain exclusive to Sony's console forever. So that makes you think maybe, maybe it might expand its wings to either xbox or pc or something I, i'd say you're more likely going to see it on you're going to see it on pc before you'll see it on xbox so i would i think it's which sony's also right to yeah i'd be, I'd be yeah. yeah which is yeah. perfect I'm, that. I'm yeah i'm into that so yeah that's yeah. i was very hopeful that they threw that in on that very last sentence right there so yeah. it makes yeah. me a little happy well, i mean it would be thing. smart for them to the, to do that too because so many people would buy it yeah and well, the best yeah. thing about those games too is like you don't have to have like the top of the line machinery to actually to like run those games and like have it play smoothly. Like you just like if you have like a probably a relatively decent PC, you can just install it and and run it. It might not look as good as as they're showcasing it, but like it'll still have the gameplay and everything that you're looking for. And like uh, we were talking about this earlier, but say um, how like Player Unknown, um, how they're they already made like 60 million they're only set to just pc right now just normal pc and then they're planning on expanding it to console as well and they're going to make so much more money by expanding it out to the other consoles and not being just set to one individual thing so that'd be that'd be really cool i wish they did that with more games yeah. and not just have it to where it's just exclusive i understand why they do it because then it makes people want to go out and buy a ps4 like i would only go yeah. out and buy a like a Nintendo Switch just so it could play Zelda or so it's yeah. kind of like that. I mean, and every, I mean, every, every, I feel like every console has like their, like their iconic franchise. Like you're never going to see Halo on PlayStation. You're never going to see Uncharted or like The Last of Us on Xbox. But like a prime example though of a, a company that did that and did it well was BioWare back for, I, th I think they did it when Mass Effect 3 came out. <clears throat> They might have did it for Mass Effect 2, but I know the original Mass Effect was an Xbox exclusive. Like, it wasn't on PlayStation at the time. And as soon as they switched, like, not only did it open up their market for, like, future games, but it I, it definitely increased their sales then, too, because they made all the other ones backwards compatible. Or they, like, ones PlayStation compatible as well. Seems like PS4 is getting like, or well, just PlayStation, Sony gets like all the really good exclusives. Because yeah, then they have got a, then they have got a war too. Yeah. Like, yeah, they, they know. they're they're no, killing no, Xbox no. right now in exclusives yeah. for sure. Dude, Xbox keeps canceling all of their like, I don't know why they keep canceling all of their exclusives. Like that fucking Scalebound game, which looked awesome. They had a couple of gameplay demos at like the past like the past two like E3 and, and I think maybe like PAX in the um in the fall. But like they had a gameplay demos of it and it's a game that got originally outed in like 2014 and it was supposed to come out this year and they canceled it at like the beginning of the year. That was going to be like one of their newest exclusive titles and I have no idea why. Like why yeah. like I don't know. It makes no sense. Like, but yeah, so I don't know why Sony manages to have like all of the cool games. God of War is to this day like one of my favorite. Yeah, one God of my Wars. favorite game franchises. One of the best yeah. like series. All right, moving along here, the <laughs> Xbox Spring Sale is coming up, and 
you should go check it out for realsies because there are a lot of games that are discounted up to 75% off. I think it's just it's just the backwards compatibility stuff. So it's like the 360 games that you can play on the Xbox One. Yeah, because they, they just did their like Xbox One. Yeah. Like a month ago. And there, so some of the games are called COD Black Ops 2, Red Dead Redemption, Grand Theft Auto 4, Skate 3. And I'm sure the list goes on and on and on. And you can, like I said, you can get up to 75% off. This starts on Tuesday, May 16th. And yeah, check it out. I'm not. About, probably about a week. Yeah, they said they'll think it'll go like a normal, like. Yeah. Xbox Gold like week or whatever like that, and they said it will be like 275 backwards compatible games that are going to be on sale. Yeah. So I don't know. That's wonder, interesting. I'm I'm going to definitely go check that out. Announce a new like on Tuesday if they're going to announce a new game to be backwards <clears> compatible. Maybe the top one yeah. on the list I think it just says at the it says at the bottom that the top one on the list now is Skyrim. Which I'm, Which, yeah, I'm guessing sense. that it, those are just like leftover votes from when people voted before um, the remastered version well, came out. Yeah, well, I mean, those people, I mean, the reason they would want it as backwards compatible, though, is because they can get it way cheaper than they could. The new, like, that game's, now that they've got, like, a new version of that game, like, I don't think that game's ever going to become backwards compatible because they'll just say, go and buy it, like, yeah, just go yeah. buy the new version. Um, but we'll see. I could be putting my foot in my mouth in a couple of days. I doubt it. I, I I agree. I don't think it's going to. I really want to see the first two Saints Row games get made backwards compatible. They've got like Saints Row 4 is backwards compatible. Mm -hmm. Those ones are not. The, the second one is like, the I, in my opinion, the best one. I want to see that one get made backwards compatible really bad. Because I, I know that one. Like Plus... There, they're remastering it. That's why they haven't released I it yet. Uh, I doubt they're gonna re. I I doubt they'll release a remastered game at the same time as the new Call of Duty this year because oh, it no. it takes it's it's it splits the the community too much. So I I don't think they'll remaster Modern Warfare two. Let me dream. Let yeah, me I know. Dream. I wish. I wish that was that was my favorite one. Yeah. But I have hopes for this new one though. Yeah, we know. We heard you. We'll talk about Call of Duty yeah. later. Um, next thing on our list is the, I don't know who is this is by, but there's a game called Surviving Mars that has been revealed on the 12th, um, whatever day that was, Thursday, Friday, one of those two. Um, and it's kind, it kind of looks like they are making like a sims game where you build a colony on mars and you try and you know like advance your colony and what everything like that i don't know i i've played sims games before and like spore like i really like spore and if this is something like those games i could see myself playing it i might i want to say that there's like a trial that you can sign up for or not not a trial but like a beta tester I think I think I went to their their uh, website, and it was you could you could uh, sign up for it. I might try that. I'm going to try that if there is one. For sure. What do you yeah, guys think? Yeah, I. And I don't know. Like I I watched it without the sound on because we were like already like in in the beginning of the podcast, but. I don't like the trailer to me doesn't tell me enough of like it doesn't really have any like gameplay footage or anything so I don't really know because I feel like it could go one of two ways it could go like a civilization revolution type way where like top down like strategy game or it, like you said it could take like a sims approach where you're like like creating a world for like the fun of creating a world yeah um I think the art style is pretty cool I'll give them that. Like it's done. It's it's a very it's a unique looking game. A little bit cartoony, but not too cartoony. Um, so I, that makes me interested in it. But I just don't know enough about it, and the trailer didn't really show enough to make me really like be able to make a decision one way or the other. So it's Paradox Interactive is who is who's making it, but 
apparently I didn't read it completely how they said it. So it said, although you will be building a civilization, it won't, it will not be like SimCity. So it's much more of a survival game than those other city builders because you're gonna be uh, making a colony and struggling to gain a foothold, and the environment's gonna be hostile and resources are scarce. So it might be might be more fun than I, I thought it would because you might actually have to struggle. It might be, I don't know, depending on what the their hostile stuff on cause you're on Mars. So I mean, maybe aliens are coming and start zapping your little colony every once in a while. You gotta set up defenses. I don't know. I wonder, is be, it more uh, like an uh, RTS? So like a Age of Empires kind of thing. That's maybe. that's what I'm thinking. Like, because yeah. that's how Civilization or Evolution is. Like, it's a very similar. Like it's similar, more similar to that, where like you're like you create your your colonies or whatever, and then you just you're like trying to take over everyone else's. But my thing, I think though, to me, the one thing that would make me more interested in this game is where like Civilization Revolution and like Age of Empires, like Halo Wars, all of those games, like they're all or like StarCraft, like they're all kind of like closed instance where you start the game, you play for like two hours, and then you're done. Um, and then you have to start from scratch on your new game, which I'm sure is fun. But like, I feel like this, like, what would really catch my attention for this game is if it's like a perpetual game where, like, when you log out, obviously, like, it keeps your, and maybe it kind of channels like a little bit of like a Clash of Clans type feel, where like you kind of have to set up your your base to get defended while you're gone. Like, if you come back, like, it's not going to be completely destroyed, but people can like attack you while you're not there. Um, but if it's kind of like a perpetual, like, every time you log in, like, or, like, you know, you don't start from scratch every time. I feel yeah. like that'd be really cool. But we'll see. And that we shall. Um, I was going to say something else about it before we moved on, but I can't remember what it was. Um, so we'll just... And stuff. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's, there's going to be, like, aliens, or I kind of like that approach, the Clash of Clans approach, to where a hostile environment actually means you're playing, it's always PvP or something like that. Yeah, I just, I think it would, like, just for the... The reason I like that idea is because I can't, like, I don't like to really get into, like, the, like, the games where you, every, like, two hours are, like, starting from scratch. Um... Because you put so much work and effort into like strategizing, like how you want to build your like civilization or whatever, um, that you want to see those rewards pay off like in the long run. Um, now I don't, I don't want to see it be a game like Clash of Clans where like you like build something and it takes like five days for that thing to get built. Like that's annoying. Um, mm -hmm. It's not that kind of game. Like you want that. Like maybe it takes like thirty seconds, um, but it's just not that kind of game. Um, but I definitely, yeah, I like the idea of kind of having the ability to go PvP with people, like, at all like at all times. I think it would add, like, a fun, it would add a fun mix. And, too, if they do keep it where, like, everything's a bit more local, you can actually, like, maybe seven people, like, they start them all at the same time. So you can kind of see each other's bases, like, really grow. And, like, their civilizations start to kind of expand out on their own. I don't know. I think that'd be cool. The only thing I don't want it to be is the thing that killed Clash of Clans for me is the resources and how to upgrade like buildings and stuff. It just you'd have to wait like a week just to oh, upgrade expensive. a building yeah. once. Yeah, I don't I don't want that for sure. Yeah, I mean, that was a game that game turned into like how much money are you willing to spend on gems? Yep. To either cut down on time or to even like I think honestly even to get the resources that you needed at times to make upgrades was was it's a bit ridiculous as well. So oh yeah, I agree. Hopefully it doesn't kind of go that way with it. All right. So moving back to Call of Duty, not speaking about the new one or Modern Warfare 2, but Black Ops has Black Ops 3 has a new Zombies DLC that has eight of the most notably the most known i guess or whatever they decided to pick um maps from world at war black ops and black ops 2 this actually makes me want to check out black ops 3 maybe because i know obviously infinite warfare failed miserably and i guess black ops 3 was 
Was it terrible? I don't know if it was terrible. I don't know anything about it. I yeah. never played. It wasn't but too it, bad. But I mean, this has like Kinder Toten and and yeah. maps like that, like Bird the, the original one. Yeah, it has all, it has all the original. Um, Shinonuma. All the way back from War to War, so. Which so is awesome. here's my question: Is if you play on these older maps, does it have the new weapons? I would hope not. It didn't seem like, like, like it what... in the in the trailer. Yeah, would because yeah, I feel like that's what made um, that's what made the old games like kind of terrifying. Was like that when you started off, like there were times where you were kind of getting overrun, and you literally had like a couple that you were just hoping you could kill enough of them with. Mm. Oh, they are so it's only releasing for PS4 first on the 16th, and then they haven't decided they haven't announced when it's coming to Xbox One and PC. That's the way everything with Call of Duty a month now. after. So it, yeah, they're yeah, PS4 all of, exclusive. Yeah, all of yeah. So it gets released for PS4, and then like a couple weeks later, Xbox and PC will get it. And that's just because all the pros they have the contract. PS4 has the contract with um, whoever. Um, and then, so, but that contract's actually coming up soon, so, and they're hoping the Xbox can get it, so it, that'll be the end of all that crap of PS4 getting the stuff first. But, I don't know, I think the, I think it's pretty cool. It's just gonna be on how, one up, they're probably remastering the map so they look a little bit better, because World at War, obviously, th those, they were creepy, but I mean, they could look, yeah, they could look so much better, so I hope they put a little bit of time and remaster it into where it looks good and stuff like that, but, it's gonna be weird if you can do like the little uh, double jumps to where it, because it, that'll change the map completely if you're like jumping all over the place and because you're using the Black yeah. Ops 3 movement. So I don't know. I mean, on we'll the see. trailer, yeah, on the trailer it shows like the guns. So it's got like the the ray gun and I can't remember what the like the shotgun was that like chant like it like jumped from people to people. Um, mm -hmm. It's got those guns, but it looks like I'm it, based on what I've seen. The Wonder Waffle. <laughs> um, that's what it's called it's called the wonder yeah. waffle i know it's the best game the best names uh but it does look like the guns you use when you're playing are, are just the guns from call of duty like black ops 3 hmm. i don't I'm know not... i don't know it they they looked normal to me but i just i never played black ops 3 so i have no idea what the guns are in that one yeah well, I mean, they're, yeah, they're, like, Black Ops 3 has, like, normal-looking guns. Like, they're not, like, super futuristic or anything like that. But, like, I, like there was one where it was clearly the um, the theater map from Black Ops 2, maybe, or, or the original Black Ops, yeah. where there's not that good of weapons, and it was, like, a very modern-looking shotgun. So. I guess we'll see. Map. And they say they're saying it's gonna cost thirty bucks, which is more yeah. than a normal map pack. I don't even remember. Yeah. I don't even remember how much map packs are because I usually just buy the season pass when I buy not, the game. Not to uh, mention, this isn't even it. the newest Call of Duty. This is... yeah, I know. So that's literally so that to me, what that is saying is that's they know it failed. Still, yeah, they know it failed, and they're trying to get as much money in this fiscal year as they possibly can. So they're doing everything in their power. Yeah. To try to squeeze more money. That's why they did Modern Warfare Remastered because they knew the game was going to tank. Infant Warfare was going to tank. And so now they're releasing all this stuff for uh, Black Ops 3, which is not even the newest game. It's the oldest game that we've already been playing for like a year and a half. Well, because this year, because so. this new one that's coming out, that's going to be a development shift, right? Like it's a new team. It's like the, the new team. Yeah, they well, switch it, back and forth still, don't they? Yeah, it's, it, this one's going to be Sledgehammer. The next one that comes out, so it's it's gonna switch teams, and then they're gonna stop. Like the other companies gonna stop making money, so it makes sense. They're just Activision, just trying to squeeze all the money they can. And they're the greedy little mofos, and that's why they're amping up the cost and stuff like that. So, well, they're doing a good yeah. job because I'm thinking about buying Call of Duty Black Ops Three, <laughs> so I can play. I think you might Max. you might have it already. Oh, you For bought sure. it. You digitally downloaded remember buying it? it? Remember buying it, but I have it on my Xbox, which means you might. Those games come out on PC, right? Yeah, they're out on yeah. PC. That might be nice to like see what it looks Could like. Be... Yeah, maybe you'll actually get back into Call of Duty if you play it on PC. Like if you get the new one on PC when it comes out. I wonder how awful the community is. 
I don't know. It might. I know, like, old Call of Duty, that's where all the hackers were, were in PC lobbies, but... Because that's back in the day when I played, like, the original Counter-Strike. I tried it on, I tried Call of Duty on PC, and I hated it, because there was, like, hackers all over the place. And then... I'm sure I that know, So I changed. never tried it, so I... I don't know. We'll see. But if you get on PC, I might try it on PC, too, but I'm still getting it on Xbox as well, so... Yeah, because you're rich. I'm probably just not going to buy it. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move along um, to another subject that Sharky is interested in. The Madden 18 teaser trailer came out. Um, and it was announced, I think, last week as well that Tom Brady was going to be on the cover of it. And he even came out and was like, look, the, the curse isn't real. He made a video. Of mm -hmm. saying that the curse isn't real, and he broke, he broke a mirror. A, um, a mirror, and he went under a ladder, and he's just like, "See, I'm uh. fine," and I'm just <laughs> like, "I hope you die or something." Well, maybe not, <laughs> maybe not that extreme. Maybe like break his hand or something. He's gonna, and he's, he's gonna, gonna have, have like to be a out. Hip or something like that. And then I mean, so, he's, had a, he's had a long, successful career, so it's about time something tragic happens. It's always every time that they're on the cover of a Madden something happens either they have the world shitty season they get hurt they i don't know something something always happens and it's going to be interesting to see if that actually happens to tom Brady. yeah what happened to that Watch. one browns player that was on the cover that one year Peyton Hillis. yeah where the heck is he um he got traded or signed with like the colts or something and just hasn't played well since then he had literally he had literally like a half year like one year that was like it was like a half season that was awesome yeah, and yeah. then I remember that year there was like a bracket where you voted who should win, and he was like the last seed, and it, it, the fan well, base dude, behind him was just so much, and I don't think they've done it since cause, then. No, because I'm pretty sure every Browns fan just went on and voted like 20 times. <laughs> yeah, and then the Madden people were like, seriously, guys? Like, this is <laughs> – this is, we give you this power and you do this? You pick this person? Yeah. Side yeah. note, the Browns draft was really good this year. I was impressed. I think they're actually not going to be, like, awful next year. Fingers crossed. Well, they're so young, though. Yeah. Vegas right, has them as a, so Vegas has them at, at a four and a half. So And then people are betting either, either over or under four and a half. So Wins? They all, they're, yeah. So they, they think they're going to lose more than – No, I'm okay with lose. that. Yeah, uh, okay I, I their schedule is hard this year, so less. they're I I can see them only winning maybe three games most, if any. No. There's a lot I of people saying that they're. Less. There's a lot of people saying that they might not win any, so. But the thing about it is just but I don't want to get too far off topic, but like they did the one thing I was hoping they were gonna do, which is they drafted very defense heavy. Mm. Like so, like their offense didn't get much better, but I think they realized like. Hey, if we kind of have like a better defense, we can stop teams from scoring as much. They didn't like some of their games they lost last year. They didn't lose by a ton. Nope. nope. Oh, like they got um, from A and M in the first round. They got an, a tight end. They got Jabril Peppers, who will be a linebacker. And then like the rest of their draft was defense heavy, except for the quarterback that they picked up. All right, that's enough anyway. of the Browns. Whoa, yeah. let's. <laughs> So back to Madden, anyways. Oh, so yeah, I wonder what I wonder what's all going to come in the because there's a special edition that's called the Goat Edition, which everybody knows Tom Brady. They refer to him as the Goat. So I mean, that's I wonder so what's all. That'd be awesome if they had some like funny thing in the the that special edition or whatever like that. So he has a goat helmet. Oh, oh, are you serious? Or are you just guessing? I'm being facetious. No, oh, I was gonna say that'd be. <laughs> Like how they ever, all those people were running around with that like horse mask. If they had like a goat mask, yeah, that'd be hilarious. Yeah, I forgot about. I I even mentioned in our little text conversation that the ultimate edition is called the goat edition, and I think that's so stupid. Yeah, I feel like this might be just like Tom Brady's way of saying like, "Hey guys, I'm giving this one more year, and then I'm done." No, oh, no, 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 no. Tom Brady's not going anywhere, sir. What are you talking? Dude, he's like he's like forty. 
But he keeps talking like he's in his prime. He's not. He's not gonna go anywhere. It's, we're gonna see him until he's looking fucking a walker. Well, yeah, we'll see. Uh, All right, on to the next one. Unless you have, <laughs> you don't have anything else to say. Uh, Are you gonna say something? No. They should okay. just throw a half a half deflated ball in the, that package, and I'll be okay with the like <laughs> pump, and we're okay. My, my only comment for Madden is bring back college football. Because yeah, that's and basketball, damn it! And screw Patriots. Hey, bring back a golf game because we haven't had a golf game since the Rory McRory game. What the f is that? I used to like Tiger Woods because Tiger, like Wood Tiger Woods is gone. That's why. <laughs> I'm talking about the game Tiger Woods. So need to get a new one. Tiger, Tiger Woods single handedly went on the greatest like life downward spiral that I've ever seen. <laughs> <And> like <laughs> just in like two years, his life just like fell apart. And or he, che- he, he cheated on his <laughs> wife, and whoever he cheated on must have sucked all the fucking talent right out of him. Because <laughs> it was just like for him, it was like uh, it was that, and then he just started like sucking at golf, and then he hurt himself, and he just he's been garbage ever since. It was awesome. There's, all, there's there's always next year. Yeah, not for Tiger. So welcome back to the oldie gaming stream where this this episode we're just gonna literally keep getting off topic. Hope you have fun. We're having fun clearly. Uh, next topic is a new Super Nintendo game is coming out in Japan, and this to me is just like monumental because the Super Nintendo is twenty years. Old. It start, first started selling 20 years ago, and someone has been kind enough to take the time and make a game for it. It looks, I mean, it looks like a, an old game, obviously, because... Actually, no, that's pretty nice. I'm looking at these screenshots at the bottom. That's a pretty nice-looking game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, it definitely, like, I mean, if you think about it, though, like, the old Mario games and stuff, like, they actually look pretty good. Um, like, it's, like, they have to, they're more bound by, like, the pixels and stuff, but, like, even for them being pixel, like, pixel game, like, very, like, low pixel density games, like, pretty good. Like, this, I, this is for sure going to be pushing the console to probably as its, it's maximum. Max, yeah. Looks like a cool, like, cool take on, like, Mega Man. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, so so stores like um, the Exchange are going to be bumping all of their mm-hmm. old Nintendo Super Nintendos out that just sit on the shelf for forever. But yeah, I think this is cool. I think they were... It's So it's a side-scroller. Um, it's going to be around $62, which... Wow. It, yeah, that's a lot for a Nintendo Super Nintendo game. What it's else was cool. I reading? It's a classic, man. Yeah, oh, and it's, but I, I mean, don't think you, you don't get a uh, physical copy of the game. Or how, phys- how oh no, work? players will be able to purchase. I thought it said unable. Oh, I was gonna say, how would you play? Because you actually have to slide it in the thing. Yeah, dude. I just, I don't know. I feel like the... it's a Steve thing for the twentieth anniversary of the console. That's what the game is. For. Yeah, but even still, that's a that's a steep price point. Oh yeah, for but sure. Really, for for what you're getting out of it, aside from the fact that it's, aside from the fact that it's a new game, like, it, like it, how can you market that at sixty two dollars when you're marketing other games, like when other games on like the new consoles are being marketed at the same price, like. Unless the story is like really good or something like, but even still, I feel like that doesn't justify the price. Yeah, we'll see. I guess. I and they could be using this as because I guess the rumors have been that they're the rumors is uh, Nintendo circulating and planning to release a miniature plug and play version of the Super Nintendo console. Yeah, just like the, that's the other thing that I was reading. Yeah, just like the NES that they just discontinued was kick me off because stupid but if they do that i don't what so you're gonna have to hurry up and 
get this off the shelf, this next one, if they bring out this next one before they discontinue it as well. Uh, and then it's going to be like sold out, especially if they do it around the holidays again. It's going to be sold out like immediately. You're never going to get a hold of one, just like you can't get a hold of the the other one. Uh, we'll see. They're Nintendo playing so us for suckers. On. That's what they're doing. Yeah, they are. But right. you can buy the original one for like 600 bucks. Or you can buy the new one for like 600 bucks. Yep. I just messed my hair up. Okay. On to the next one. Um, who released this? Don't know. But there was a... I don't even know what this is. They... It's a, I know it's a Kickstarter just, project. Oh, it is? Okay. They're just kind of talking about it on GameStop. There is a MMO on PC that is eerily it's similar DJ. to Red Dead Redemption. It's it's being developed by 612 Games. Oh. They've worked on, like, League and Crisis and stuff. So they've got some... They've got experience, but they're, yeah. like, a new development team. Oh. It looks pretty cool. These screenshots are... It's yeah, gonna be it looks... it's gonna be like a higher end, so it's not gonna be like your Swotor or WoW, where the graphics you know aren't really the best. It's going to be, um, what's like, yeah, you're Sword gonna be, Art Online. Your PC's maybe? gonna be, yeah, your PC's gonna have to be putting out some power to really run mm -hmm. this at like at max. in the ultra settings and yeah, and then have it also run smoothly. It like the screenshots look incredible though. For yeah, sure, they do. like. It looks like it's so eerily it's similar to timing. Red Dead, though. Interesting timing for the game. The Red Dead Redemption's on the horizon. Red Dead Redemption. I don't two. know if they've. Yeah, or yeah, two. Red Dead Redemption Two. I don't know if they've given like an official release for that or yet, that yet or not. But I mean, like knowing that that game's like right on the horizon, probably at the end of this year or the end of next year. It's questionable timing for a Kickstarter project to be trying to do the same thing. Right. But I don't know. Because Rockstar's got the one thing going for them, which is they've got more of like the, the longevity and like proven that they can make good games. So we'll see. What's up, Cheesecake? Cheesecake? So, Cheesecake, <laughs> like with an S H, not a C H. Cheesecake. Uh, good. Okay. So, this next thing here is a. We're going to talk about a, a set, the next Assassin's Creed. They yeah. leaked a screenshot of the next one. I didn't really look at this. What you can tell them what it's what it's about. They've so they, this is this isn't the first one that's been leaked. Um, there's been like a slow stream images that have like they've come out, but like they've never really shown enough detail that in the past they were like rumored to be a new Assassin's Creed game, but they could never really have been like corroborated or like proven as a new Assassin's Creed game. Where this one has like, as far as like what appears to be the setting, but like the the HUD and the UI on the screen actually like sh like I think there's like some text in the top left of the like the screen the gameplay screen says something about like assassinating a target or like infiltrating an area um, and based on like the person that you're the person's palace that you're going to infiltrate it more or less is confirming the Egyptian setting um, but they also like went into a little more detail and said that this game its code name for like the entire time it's been developed has been Assassin's Creed Empire. Um, for whatever reason, that's just what they chose. Um, but they said that they're pretty sure that the actual launch title is going to be called Assassin's Creed Origins because this actually takes place before the first game. Hmm. So we'll see. It looks cool. Like the the character that they chose, like the character model looks different, but for like the Egyptian setting, looks very like appropriate he's got like a shield and like more of like a shimitar type sword yeah. or scimitar however you want to say it i don't know they there's this game unlike ubisoft's old games they've done a really good job on this one of making sure that literally there's like no there's like no detail 
from like these screenshots letting people like piece together essentially that the time period is Egypt. Other than that, like But those aren't they're not even confirmed that it's Assassin's Creed though, right? They're they're not, but who is I think Kotaku I think it's either them or maybe it's like that them or or I think Eurogamer. I don't know. There's one company that does articles that is like notorious for having accurate Assassin's Creed links. Like somehow or another, they have someone like I think inside at Ubisoft that like leaks them information. It's um yeah. and like, it's been confirmed by like it's been co- confirmed by Kotaku and Eurogamer that it's that it is Assassin's Creed related. So, I mean, like, for as much as it can be confirmed without Ubisoft just coming out and saying yes. It sounds like um, that they're... The, the, that's how you start their buzz, is this is the person you go to to leak. That's yep. why every time I, I see leak, I air quotes around it because they're doing it on purpose. But they're going, yeah. you know, they're going to the right people to do it for them. Well, they're they're doing it smart this time though like like literally in the past like in the past like their games have been completely outed by like like in one way or another like these games aside from assassin's creed 2 that was the last game that that was the last assassin's creed game that ubisoft made that didn't have any sort of like leaks surrounding it when it came out and like these ones i mean yeah they're leaks but like I don't know. I don't consider them to be really, like... I don't get really consider them to be a leak only for the reason that, like, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's just confirming, like, a time period. They haven't shown any gameplay. Like, there's no, like, hints to the mechanics or the story. Like, I don't know. So we'll see. I'm excited for it, though. This is probably my favorite, like, game series of all time. So I'm sure they'll come out with something at E3. Yeah, E3 is going to be a big one for them. Or is Ubisoft not going to this year's E3? I forget. I don't remember who. No, they are. Okay. We should Ubi- all play Ubisoft. It. Ubisoft has way too much. Um, they they have way too many like AAA titles and stuff that come out to not be at E3. Um, yeah, they usually yeah, get like, for the a record, whole segment. In the well, uh, yeah, they they usually have their own like standalone. But hey, for the record, in the future, since I'm out in California now, if I have PTO days and you guys want to. There's good. I think starting this year, they're gonna sell like limited number of tickets yep. to the public. Mm-hmm. That maybe next year, if we all buy tickets, I will. We can just take a week off of work and go to LA. Yeah. Anyway, that sounds great. Um, next subject here. We're actually almost done here. I think there's only a couple more. Yeah, this is a pretty short one. Yeah, there's and, a, and there's even so, like really, the last three are just kind of like blurbs. Yeah, just like quick, quick topics. Um, so this one is um, a dead a Deadpool animated show is set to premiere in 2018. And really the only thing that I have to say about this is here comes the oversaturation of Deadpool. That's what I feel like is happening now. That they yeah. came out with a really yeah. good movie about it and a bunch of people didn't even know who Deadpool is and now they're bandwagoners and they love Deadpool. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, that's just that's the way it works, though. Like, I feel like like they look. I mean, look at like Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, no one knew who they were until like two years ago. That's true. And now they've got like the standalone like, like the episodic games that are coming out, and like I'm sure like you know they've got like action figures and they've got. I don't know. I, this isn't uncommon. I think it's more just that like. Deadpool is good in doses. Like he's not someone that you want. Like I feel like he's not a character that you want like too much of, just because of nah, how his character I, is. I disagree. I could take Deadpool eight days a week. Ah, that's a lot yeah. of Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Did you guys? Did any of you play the original Deadpool game? No. Mm. That was hilarious. Hilarious. It was awesome. I enjoyed I it. really, <laughs> I really want Marvel like. Want them just so badly to make game that is basically their equivalent of the Batman games that have come out here recently because those Batman games, like the stories are really good, but just like the combat mechanics and stuff on them are so perfect for like how you would expect superheroes to fight. 
I, I really want them to make a game Are like that. Are you talking about like the Arkham PC. games? Yeah, like from a gameplay standpoint, just with like the, the the counter systems and like combat system, it works really well for superheroes. And like Deadpool would be, if you think about those games, like he's the perfect character to like for like that style of combat right. where like I mean, you, I mean, obviously he can't die, but like in the game, he obviously would. Um, either that, or I want DC to make one with like all like a bunch of like Justice League characters or something. I don't know. Yeah, but I like, think Deadpool a video a game, game for Deadpool a though would be really hard to do because he can't die, and it's like maybe maybe what a good thing would be is if you would like lose health enough health, you like lose a hand and you have to go and heal like your hand your... back and you don't come back and that that would be like dying would be like losing a limb or something or you lose his consciousness yeah. you actually have to knock him out so yeah it's like a like a bar that shows his consciousness and then as you're like beating on him and then until he's like completely knocked out yeah i agree it's just because of that like immortality mechanic like it makes it tough but he like he'd be the right character that would he you could make a really fun game with yeah. him with the story, um, and, and the combat would. I mean, the, the dude uses guns and he's got katanas. Like, what do you want? Right. Um. Yeah, it, it's going to be a very Deadpool heavy couple of years, I think. Sure. All right, so. A patch for Mass Effect Andromeda. If you watched the stream this week, we tested it out. It came out the 10th, I believe. Yeah, I think like Wednesday. And it fixed... So the original Mass Effect, especially the one lady that... the One of the ladies that's in, that you go to and she's in charge of the main area where you start... When she would talk to you, her eyes just like don't close and don't move. And they fixed a lot of that like facial thing. Yeah, like creepy stuff like that. And that was one of the, that was one of the things in this patch where they, they fixed facial. What, how do I want to phrase this? They fixed the facial movements of everyone to look more realistic. So like your cutscenes when you're talking to people, it doesn't look scary and it doesn't look like they put zero time into it now. And they also changed some uh, multiplayer stuff to where at the end of the game, you're using less melee heavy stuff. Like uh, for higher leveled um, games, you you know, you go into a seven rounds. And that seventh round, seventh round, there was only one sniper that everyone uses, or like a melee build, and they fixed it to where other guns are better at the end of the game. Is basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, assault rifles. Once you got past bronze, like assault rifles, more or less like lost their value. At that point, it just became like. You needed guns that could just do a ton of damage like really quickly. But yeah, I mean, even just off the because we only played, I think, well, we played on Thursday, I want to say. Yeah. Um, mm. And I mean, we only played a few matches, but even in those few matches, like the buffs that they made to weapons is is actually like pretty significant. I found myself enjoying using not just my sniper anymore, which was a welcome change because um, I was pretty much using like exclusively a sniper for. Yeah most of the online play that I did. Yeah, it's definitely more enjoyable. And I think now I'm going to play the story more because that was definitely one of the things that kind of ruined it for me when I was playing. And that that lady is just, she's creepy. Mm -hmm. I was watching some of, I was watching that video too. And they didn't just like overhaul the facial animations. Like, like change the cutscenes. Like there's one where they like they show it pretty early in the video on the link. Um, I don't know if you're gonna like be putting these links in like a description on YouTube. I probably or should, but, but I never do. Um, but the the link like the video for the link that's in the description is like there's a scene where you're having a conversation with that director, 
and in like the original she's just like standing there like with her arms crossed looking kind of like freaky um and in the new one like they change it to where she's like you know she's like touching her face and like blinking you know she's like actually making like hand motions and stuff too though like like a normal person would when they talk yep um made some of the cutscenes creepier it wasn't so much that the facial animations were like got once you got used to it it was pretty easy to get past it it was more the fact that like some of them literally they just like stood there like they were like petrified like talking to you and that was it like and then so now they're making them just more like human like hold on yeah, yeah, it definitely looks a lot better now, for sure. More playable. Ooh, one other thing, it's like a small change, but I know they noted it in the patch notes, is when you get dialogue options now, they used to have it where, like, they would gray out the dialogue options for whatever reason. Um, where, like, even if they were a selectable option, they would gray out the dialogue boxes. Like, you could still pick them. But now they like they made it so that those are white again, so that like you know that you could, like you know for sure that you can choose them. I don't know. That's just something little, but it'll probably help people that are newer playing. Yeah. Oh man, you guys are being real cool in chat right now. Are the troll in your chat? Yep. Thanks, Jay Brock. Goodbye and don't come back. Mm. All right, so our last um, topic here. It just amazes me. It's uh, There's another game called Star Citizens, and it's a crowdfunded game. And they have made $148 million for this game. And I think it seems like the way they're talking is it's a very, it's either a small team or like one guy that's creating this game. And basically, what the game is is this picture not the right one i thought i thought it was a space game isn't it a space game or am i completely off star citizen i don't, I, I don't think it's like strictly space like i'm pretty sure oh. there's like similar to the game you talked about earlier where it's like you're trying like you're like settling planets and shit My expectations i think this is the one that i'm thinking of that had like a test you could test it do a beta or whatever it doesn't really say what the game type of game is. Yeah, I don't know. I've I, I've heard of the oh, game. Oh, Mark Hamill is a voice it. actor in it. Nice. Yeah, they said parts of the game are playable, but the full game is full title has no release date yet. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure people are just playing what they can. And then once the game is ready for launch, but like I mean, I mean, like you said though, if this guy's doing it by himself, like, could take him years. I mean, literally years yeah. to develop this game. Yeah, but I I just wanted to talk about like how amazing that is that crowdfunding can fund 148 million dollars for a game, That's one insane. game. But... Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you've got the right concept though, like. Like, if you've got the right concept, and I think it's really refreshing for a lot of people, too, to not be playing a game that's made by a AAA developer. Like, because some of the ind independent developers now can come up, they can just come up with some really creative games. They just maybe are lacking, like, the monetary resources or, like, the dedication to, like, wanting to play it. So I think it is cool, like, where this game, it's not just, like, a space shooter. Like, there's actually some exploration and stuff involved. It's kind of like No Man's Sky yeah. is my impression of it. Yeah. But, like, a more realistic No Man's Sky. And hopefully more fun. Yeah. But, like, I mean, the game itself, like, it's a really cool concept. It looks really cool. Like, this is a game that I think a lot of people would enjoy playing. And so I can see why it's raised that much money. Yeah. And then I'm sure I'm sure this dude will make a ton of money when he finally finishes releasing it. 
Yeah, because yeah, if there's know. enough backers to back $148 million worth and then he's going to sell to each one of them for, what, 60 bucks? Bank. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah. the crowdfunding thing's insane. People, yeah. you, you can make so much money off of it. I mean, this, this dude hasn't even finished a, a complete game. And if, it, let's say it was a complete game, this guy's sold like two and a half million copies. If it, if like just if like if you take what he's made on the development of it and translated it success. into copies sold, yeah, like yeah. So I mean, you if you can imagine him pushing this game to a full launch, like this dude's gonna make so much money. And if he's by himself or on a small team, like he's taking that entire like piece of the pie. Go from a trailer park to a mansion. I doubt he was in a trailer park. He was probably on some team before. Yeah. That is some yeah. drop. That's edge. awesome, though. What? I'd be interested in. My stream is dropping. Upload. Oh, that's not good. It still looks fine. Oh no, mm -hmm. it doesn't. Oh well, we're it's. That was our last topic. That's the yep. episode for this week. We had a great time. We hope you did too. We got trolled a little bit in Twitch chat. It's all good. It happens sometimes. Thanks, you got to just get rid of those guys. I think for next week though, um, I'm going to put our names on here. Like I'm going to put Oldie Gaming above mine and then, you know, your guys' names. Because there was actually a person that came in here and was asking for names. What like our actual names were. And obviously if they weren't here for the beginning, they don't know. Yeah. All right. So I'll check everyone else next week. See ya. Say that again. They didn't hear it. Crisco out. <laughs>